Hi everybody and welcome to the Appomattox Courthouse National Historic Site. I decided to come here today um, basically because after a tropical storm has come through the temperatures went from like 95 degrees and 90 percent humidity down to a lovely 63 degrees and almost no humidity and long sleeves so anyways Appomattox Courthouse almost everybody knows what it is about it sits in the middle of Virginia and it is the place that we recognize today as the surrender site of Robert E. Lee to Ulysses S. Grant which ended the American Civil War 28 years ago I actually came here as a Civil War reenactor 23 years old and me and my friend Scott Buffington and the rest of our unit basically stood right up there and watched the entire proceeding all the Confederate reenactors coming by and marching by and stacking their arms and furling their colors and placing them on the stacks some reenactment units would leave their colors there never to come back I'm sure they came back for their weapons so but it reenacted an event that actually took place here on April 9th 1865 Robert E. Lee was the general in command of the Army of Northern Virginia but also the general in command of the Confederate Army and he would surrender to Ulysses S. Grant who was the general command of all the federal armies and so just up there beyond the square is where the McLean house sits and that's where they would meet to do the surrender the town of Appomattox Courthouse today isn't occupied it's owned and operated by the National Park Service many of the original buildings still stand they have been reconditioned and repurposed the original courthouse is now the visitor center the original tavern is now an interpretive center and even one of the buildings is the gift shop so now we make ourselves a little bit deeper into the town we've gone through the center square the courthouse right behind me and in front of me the road continues on into present-day Appomattox and then on to Lynchburg then on to Bedford which has its own significance World War II and then ultimately on to Roanoke but there is the McLean house and that's where it all happened there the surrender ceremony in the front parlor well all I can think about are the soldiers and some of the civilians that would have lined these fences on that day inside that building over there inside that front window their fate was being determined by two of their own commanders and I know Confederates I don't think were really here I think some of the Lee staff were in the front yard here and I think that they were getting stared at rather intently but I think that whenever Lee came off the stairs and then he looked out and he saw this sea of blue and he's on those stairs and he comes down he mounts Traveler he gets out to here and he turns to Grant doffs his cap Grant does the same thing it's kind of like a salute then he rides away I am just drawn to the people that were in these fields wondering oh my god it's all over it's done it's done now my great-grandfather enlisted in the second Pennsylvania heavy artillery whenever he was 16 years old but that was in January of 1864 so just a year and four months later the war was over for him but so many others had fought in larger campaigns over longer periods of time they had to have been relieved I spoke earlier about the other end down there the last shot that occurred there the last artillery piece fired from down there and nobody wanted to mess it up no one wanted to die this close to the very end and then the road that goes out that way would have just been leading to fields of thousands of Confederates who were stacking their arms and uh, giving up their lives especially after Lee's farewell address but the building that fared the worst was the McLean house itself and not because of a battle or the war but because of souvenir seekers because people couldn't come to Appomattox they decided to take a piece of Appomattox to them and so the house was dismantled and rebuilt so many times at different fairs and on a traveling tour that by the time that it came back to Appomattox courthouse there wasn't much left even during the surrender ceremony nothing much survived in the room as a matter of fact as Grant and Lee were going out the front door some of the stuff was going out the back door tables chairs candlesticks even McLean's daughter's doll fell victim to souvenir seekers now contrary to popular belief J. 
just because Lee and Grant met up there didn't mean that it all ended almost immediately. Things had to happen. Commissions had to be established to take care of all the surrender um, ceremonies and all that kind of stuff. But two events occurred right in this area. The first of which occurred on the morning of April 10th. This was the day after the surrender. Lee comes out and meets Grant again and they kind of have a little chat. You know, they're buddies now. And basically Grant says, hey, you know, since you're the con commander of all the Confederate forces, is there any way that you can kind of surrender all the armies? Lee had to remind him, the Confederates, who is all about states' rights, he had not, he didn't have the authority to do so, but that he would send out the word. And then he says to Grant, hey, you know, I've got a favor to ask you. You know, I'm going to have all these guys that are, you know, on the verge of surrendering and on their way home. Is there any way that you can guarantee some safe passage for them. You know, if you're surrendering here in Virginia and you've been fighting for Texas, you've got to go from here to Texas home. That's a lot of hostile territory. Can you guarantee safe passage? Grant basically says the same thing. You know, hey, I'll put the word out. Now the road behind me is the actual road that used to come up through the village. And this is the route that the Confederates marched into as they went into the stacking of arms ceremony. And it was here that General John Gordon's division, who was marching up the road, first encounters Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain, who is a major general at this point, and he's one of the uh, generals in charge of the surrender ceremony. And Gordon's troops come through. Legend has it that Chamberlain orders his men to shoulder arms or carry arms as a position of, of, of respect. And of course, the Confederates basically returned the favor. But the legendary portion of it is that John Gordon brings his sword to his nose, and as he drops his sword tip to his boot, his horse bows. A little magical there, a little magical. But that was just the beginning. Now did Chamberlain have his guys come to shoulder arms every single time a new division came through? Not really sure. But it is a great story, and it is probably one of the very first stories that talked about reunification and reuniting the country. Respect for respect. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little online tour, this brief one. Again, there's a lot that I did not get to, but that's for you to come out and visit and see, for you to plan your visit here to Appomattox Courthouse National Historic Site. Behind me is the grave of Lafayette Meeks. He was a resident of Appomattox who was killed in 1861. So I thought it would be fitting to end the tour here. Again, Appomattox Courthouse is near Appomattox, the town of Appomattox here in Virginia. I'm gonna go check that place out, but there's restaurants and hotels and all kind of stuff there. But Richmond is about 90 miles east of here. Petersburg about 80, 85 miles east of here. I would highly recommend coming out and checking it out. Like I said, the view is spectacular. The history is great. And our nation was reunited right here. So who can't love that? Lord knows our nation needs a little bit of reuniting right now. So if you like what you see, click like and subscribe down below. If you don't, leave a message in the comments. Let me know what you'd like to see next. And I'll talk to you later.